Hey everybody, this is Matt and we're at Texas Toast Guitars. Thanks for watching. If you have ever told me that my camera angle was all wrong, go ahead and click that subscribe button because today we are going to be doing a redemption video. Um, the last time that I did a video showing off my deadhead sander and how it worked, um, I didn't have a camera guy and so my camera angle was kind of all over the place and it you couldn't really see what was going on. A lot of people told me, I really wish you would have shown that um, better. So today I'm going to show you how to uh, how I use the deadhead sander to shape necks. And I've got my donor neck today is um, a white limba neck that we're doing for a customer. Um, and it is going to be super, super cool. So a couple of things though that I want to touch on before we get down to the meat and potatoes of the video. You will notice that this neck is fretted, but it is not nearly shaped at all. So a couple of things have been done. The headstock has been uh, um, not really thicknessed all the way, but it's been rough thicknessed. The headstock angle has is is been, uh, been applied. The neck angle has been, uh, has been put on this guitar neck. We're going to be using a, um, not a stop tail, but a pigtail kind of uh, bridge. And um, so obviously the, the, the neck's been radius, it's been fretted. Uh, I don't like the way inlay looks, so if I can get away with not doing inlay for a customer, I generally don't. But I always do side dots and side dots are done. And people always ask me, hey man, what, uh, aren't you worried about the neck kind of going all cattywampus when you when you shape the neck after you fret it and uh, no no I don't now I know you've seen that Paul Reed Smith video where the guy says that um, oh yeah man well we we uh, we make sure that the neck does all the moving it's gonna do before we fret okay cool um, I like to fret it when it's flat on the bottom so it goes through my press properly um, and then uh, we super glue the frets in and uh, we backfill all the, because uh, we always undercut the frets, so we backfill um, the little undercut area. So, yeah, you know, I've been sitting on this white limba for probably close to a decade. And um, I think it's done all the moving it's going to do. <laughs> so, so um, yeah, I'm not going to sweat the... Uh, you know, the whole idea of, well, maybe it might move around, you know, after I carve the, carve the neck. Um, I, you know, with, with all due respect to the people at Paul Reed Smith who know lots and lots and lots about building guitars, um, there's lots of ways to make guitars. And maybe this particular technique doesn't uh, fall into the um, magical 21 rules of tone, but I tell you what, it works for me, and when this guitar gets revealed to you guys, I think you'll know what I'm talking about. So, um, we don't level the frets or anything until the guitar is put together, but we go ahead and press them in, and it hasn't been an issue up to now. So, enough with the bullshit talk, let's get down to business. The first thing that we're going to do is we're going to cut as much of the meat off of this neck as we can, and I've drawn a line that's 90 thousandths from the top of the fretboard, at the first fret and um, uh, a full inch at the 12th fret. And I've drawn a line. Now all we gotta do is cut it out. So a lot of people ask me, why don't I have a sled to run this through my beloved pin router and put a round over on the neck to save time um, when, I'm, when I'm going to the deadhead sander. And the, the reason is that I actually do have one of those sleds and it does actually work, but it's kind of a pain in the ass and the deadhead sander is so quick, especially when it comes to plowing through something like white limbo or mahogany that, you know, with a 50 grit belt, there's really not a lot of reason to, uh, to do it. But every so often, what I will do is I'll use an old school trick where I'll cut a bunch off with the bandsaw before I go over to the um, uh, to the deadhead sander. And this is, like I say, this is a super super old school trick. This is um, this is the kind of thing that makes CNC guys 
kind of pooping their pants a little bit because it's really spooky. Um, <laughs> so uh, this is this is like one step above hacking at it with a knife, like the guys um, uh, at BC Rich used to do, and those guys were true true artisans. So um, what we're going to do is we're just going to kind of cut a section off of off of the side here, and that will help establish our um, profile of the neck and get a bunch of meat off that we don't have to turn into dust. We're going to turn it into a chunk. All right, let's do it. Oh, by the way, guys, I don't recommend that you do this, and, and um, uh, it's just a fun thing that I do. This is only a parlor game, merely a parlor game. That wasn't spooky at all, was it? Okay, so we're just about ready to switch over to the deadhead sander. I got my neck is ready to plop on there, uh, but I need a couple other tools. Obviously, I need my deadhead sander. Um, I like to keep a pencil over by the sander. I like to keep a set of calipers. Doesn't have to be a super fancy set. And this profiling uh, uh, gauge is also a good thing to have around. So I keep this on my. Um, Keep all these things on my deadhead sander, and I can constantly refer back to it. I've drawn a couple lines that show me where the um, the uh, the heel for the uh, guitar ends, and then I extended it out about oh half an inch. So I don't want to I don't want to go past my half inch from the heel section just yet. I kind of want to work up to that. I've also drawn a line for my volute, and I'm going to try to match that up as well as I can. Um, and we'll probably have to kind of you know, work that in with the old man machine and the deadhead sander and get everything right uh, before we go to uh, the hand stuff. But first, let's, um, let's go ahead and kind of get this all smoothed out, get this part all smoothed out, and uh, that'll give us uh, something to go with there. So let's get started. Mm. I'm going to, I promise you, I don't have a camera, man, but I promise you I'm going to move the, the, uh, the camera around so you can see a bunch of different angles of what the deadhead sander is like. All right? That's actually a pretty decent spot to stop. What we want to do now is make sure that our neck is looking good. We need to have an idea of how thick we want the neck to be, you know, before we go too far. So I'm just over 900 thousandths at the 12th fret and right at about 85 or 850 thousandths at the first fret. And so my thickness is just about right, but now I need to get my profile where it needs to be. But before I do that, 
I want to make sure that my volute comes under my um, where my nut is going to be. So that means I need to scooch the this section back this way a little bit. Um, so I'm going to take this over to the old man machine, and fortunately, we're still at we're just under five eighths, and we need to be just over a half inch for the tuners we're going to use for this. So we're going to cheat this guy down a little bit and scooch the um, the tip of the volute. Eh scooch the tip of the volute to back right about here on the old man machine. Guys, you want to constantly check this, especially you know when you first start using your deadhead sander. Constantly be checking, and and know when is a good time to uh, to stop and switch to hand tools even. So um, I think I'm getting pretty close. I still have kind of a flat spot in the middle that I'm not super jazzed about. So we're gonna we're gonna address that here. You can see it as you go down here. So that means that I need to take more off of all of this spot right here. I need to make these pencil lines that I'm putting on here go away. And especially, it looks like I'm still favoring, or I haven't gotten this this chunk down yet where I need it to go. Yeah, you see, I need I need to take way more off of this side here. Okay. Okay, it looks good and it feels good. I've got a couple more things I want to do here. Um, you may have noticed that I haven't I haven't broken this edge where the fretboard starts and the neck meet ends. I always save that till the very last and I just want to put that on here and just kiss it over and make that, that kind of hard line go away there. But right now there's, a, there's definitely a flat spot where the fretboard ends and we're going to smoothen that just a tick. Then we'll, what we'll have to do is we're going to, you know, the deadhead sander can only get so much, so we're going to have to um, kind of work this this piece in by hand and we'll we'll kind of make this guy transition like we want it to transition and make sure that our volute is in the spot where it needs to be. Um, the other thing is we can we can go ahead and do this. So we probably want to do that before we go too much further and start breaking this edge here. Um, we'll go ahead and we'll just run this guy over the deadhead sander and establish our um, um, our curve for the uh, for the heel. All right. Okay. So since the deadhead sander can only get you know can only do so much, we're gonna clean up this um, the volute area with some rasps, and then if we need to take it back over to the sander, we will. Um, one thing that I usually always do and I always regret is I chip out a hunk of the the face of the headstock. So I'm going to be very careful to not do that this time. And we're really just going to smooth this out and make it make it look like a neck. Um, I need to uh, I need to come back and hit this with the deadhead sander just a little bit more. But I like to kind of wait and do this stuff in stages because what happens is you can do all of one thing and then if you need to go back and do some of the other thing, it kind of throws you off. So don't be afraid to, um, you know, kind of work this stuff, go from tool to tool and back again. And, um, you know, that's part of the fun of making guitars, right? So constantly check this, guys, and check with your with your thumbs and check with your eyes and check with your fingers and um, make sure everything is 
is smooth and feels symmetrical, unless you have an asymmetrical shape, um, you know, design. But constantly be checking this. I'm switching to sandpaper here. I might not be ready for this, but I think I am. The thing is, I just want to... I want to kind of get all the, the, the rasp marks out of the piece and see what it looks like. This is kind of where it gets, it gets a little, it gets a little dicey because you kind of want to lie to yourself and go, no, that feels really good. I really like that. Um, but reality sets in after it's all, it's all done and you wish, oh man, I wish I would have, wish I would have taken a little more off in that one patch. See, I've got kind of a, a hard line right here and that will go away with sandpaper. I don't want to rasp that off because I want to keep my headstock looking clean. Yeah, see? And again, I'm using, I'm using white limbo, which is really easy to work. Uh, this is a piece of 120 paper. That's how easy this is to work. I'm going to do the same kind of thing on the heel, although I, I need to take considerably less off the heel because um, the deadhead sander pretty much got it, got it spot on. But I do want to break this hard line, and you know sometimes, sometimes I get it with the deadhead sander, and other times I don't. And um, today I didn't get it, so it's not a big trick to go back with some uh, with some sandpaper and make it right. All right, so I got most of the hand sanding I need to get done done, and I'm noticing there's a there's a patch here that doesn't feel right, and a patch right around in this neighborhood that kind of needs to be rounded over a little bit. I got the I broke the edge off of the um, of the fretboard, but of course the camera wasn't turned on. So let's go back and I'll kind of <coughs> I'll walk you through some more of that stuff, and we'll try to we'll try to hit this patch here. And uh, this other side looks pretty decent, but yeah, right here I'm having an issue, and maybe maybe a little bit right there. And if we can get any of this stuff, that'd be good. We might have to do these by hand, but like I said, I got my neck all marked up. We're just going to go and basically take these marks off on the deadhead sander, and um, you'll see how surgical of a tool it can be. And uh, then... We should be solid. So guys, as I was telling you, I forgot to have my camera on when I did this the last time, but I wait till to break that edge off the fretboard until the very last second. Um, well, not the very last second, but till the last part of the actual shaping is done. Because what I don't want to do is I don't want to get any weird grooves in here. I don't want to sand too much in one spot. So just keep the thing moving and, um, and like I say, save that save breaking that edge off until the last or pretty close to the last anyway and um, that is a good thing That looks pretty good. Let's check it in the body. Okay, so here is the guitar with the neck just sort of pressed in. And as you can see, we are all nice and shaped and I, I really fit it snug to the heel. I don't know why I did that. I just kind of felt like doing it. So um, this neck is just about ready to be glued in. Maybe a little more hand sanding. You know, now that I'm feeling it, I can feel kind of a, kind of a corner right here. We'll take that off. We won't do that with the deadhead sander. We'll just do that with the hand sander. Um, and we might even wait to do that until um, the neck's glued in because sometimes it's just easier to, to do that with, with... Sometimes it's easier to do it when it's not attached and sometimes it's easier to do it when it is. So I think I'm going to wait to do it when it is because then I can kind of fit it to the body and it will be very cool. So, um, guys, I really, really hope that I gave you more insight as to how the deadhead sander works um, in a video format. 
And if you like the video, give me the thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed yet, like I said, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button, especially if you've ever told me that my camera angles were all wrong. Um, if you appreciate content like this, you might want to go over to our Patreon page and consider becoming a member. Even a buck a month goes a long way to helping us bring you guys neat stuff like this. But if you can't do Patreon, we totally get it. Just share the video as many places as you can think of and help us grow the channel that way. So until next time, this is Matt at Texas Toast reminding you that if you're so smart, build it yourself. That's what I do. Thanks for watching, everybody.